So now let's look at processor pipeline stalls and how they can happen. Let's say we have a five-stage pipeline and this is where we fetch the instruction, then we decode it and read registers, then we use the ALU to compute the result of the instruction, then we access memory if this is a load or store instruction, and then we write the result of the instruction to a register. This is what happens in cycle 1, cycle 2, cycle 3, etc. Suppose we have a load instruction here in our pipeline and it's going to load into R1 something from memory while this load is in the ALU stage here computing the address. So it hasn't accessed memory yet. Suppose we have an add instruction that needs to use the R1 and this instruction is already reading registers here so that it can compute the result in the next stage. And we have a subsequent instruction here, let's say another add that adds R2 to 1 and produces R3. So now the problem is that this add here is reading the wrong value of the register. So if we let it proceed further, because in the next cycle this load will be here, and now it's actually accessing memory. But by then it's too late. This add, if it moves here, will use the value of R1 that is the wrong one. It's the value of the R1 before the load actually produced the value. And this is where we get a processor stall. Pretty much what needs to happen is the add needs to stay here until it gets the correct value of R1 from the load. Because the add is stuck here, the next instruction also needs to stay where it is because it cannot move here. That means that in our pipeline, now we have a bubble, just like we did in the production line. We can have more than one bubble because of a single dependence between instructions. So in this example, next cycle, the load has loaded the value from memory into R1 and is now writing that value to a register. The add needs to repeat the read of R1 because in this cycle here, it still didn't get the correct value of R1. Although the load was now loading that value from memory, the R1 was not written yet. So now the load is writing, the add repeats the read, and because the add is still here, the next instruction is still stuck here, and that means that we have two cycles worth of stall. In this cycle, it could be that, for example, the load is writing to R1 in the first half of the cycle, and this add is reading R1 in the second half of the cycle, so next cycle the add can move on, but it could be that the load actually takes a full cycle to write the result, in which case we will have another cycle of stalling. So let's suppose that we can do this, that we can write R1 and then read it in the same cycle. If that is the case, then next cycle, which is cycle four, we will have the load leaves the pipeline. The pipeline bubble here moves forward in the pipeline. This pipeline bubble moves forward in the pipeline and now the add finally moves on so the next instruction after this add can move on. We can fetch the next instruction and so on. So as you can see here, a processor pipeline stall creates a problem because normally every cycle after the load leaves, every cycle we would have the next instruction leave, but in this case after the load leaves there are two cycles worth of pipeline bubble that finish before the next instruction. So really, instead of just having one cycle for the load, one cycle for the add, and so on to finish, we now have one cycle for the load, two cycles worth of not finishing anything, and then the add, and so on. And that causes our pipeline to have a CPI of more than one. If we count these three instructions, one, two, three instructions, we'll finish over five cycles three cycles for them and two cycles for the bubble, so really our CPI is significantly larger than one. A processor pipeline may also need to be flushed. This is an example that we didn't have in our car assembly line. 